Matthias Kvetsky was a 30-year-old construction worker from the remote town of Hutkuf, located in the southeast of Poland. In 2013, when he was 25, Matthias gained employment in Hanover, Germany, where his father and sister, Katarzyna, were both actually living and working by this time. Despite living so far away from his home country of Poland, Mateusz managed to maintain a long-distance relationship with his fiancée, who lived in the northwestern village of Lipia Gora. In the summer of 2017, the couple found out that they were expecting their first child together. On the evening of March 28, 2018, following a busy day at work in Hanover, Mateusz received word that his fiancée in Poland had gone into labour. He was due to return home in early April for Easter celebrations. However, following this call, he immediately left Hanover at approximately 11.30pm, driving his 1998 BMW 525. The 400-mile journey east through Germany and Poland towards Lipiagora would have taken around nine hours or so, with Mateusz having an ETA of sometime between 8 and 9 a.m. on March 29th. At around 10.30 a.m. the following morning, Mateusz's father called him to ask of his whereabouts, and Mateusz told him that he was near a town located by the unmanned German-Polish border, and that he had been stuck in various traffic jams due to various road accidents, putting him around two hours behind schedule. By this point, Mateusz still had around 130 miles to go until reaching Lipiagora, so he texted his fiancée to inform him that he was around two hours away. However, this was the last time that Mateusz contacted his loved ones. As the afternoon turned to evening, Mateusz's family became increasingly concerned when they still had no further word from him since 10.30am. He failed to answer his phone and also didn't show up to the hospital where his fiancée had given birth to their daughter. At around 5pm, Mateusz's mother insisted that the family go to the German and Polish police to report him as a missing person, but other family members told her to wait as he would more than likely show up eventually. His mother, going with her gut instinct that something bad had happened to her son, reported Mateusz as missing to both German and Polish authorities, though German police refused to assist, leaving the investigation entirely in the hands of the Polish police. This led to major miscommunications between both authorities, with this neglect being very obvious during the subsequent investigation. The Kavetskys requested that Polish authorities trace Matthias's mobile phone, which remained on during the days following his last known contact. However, since he allegedly called from German territory and he was using a German SIM card, Polish police could not trace it themselves. And furthermore, Matthias's phone did not connect at any point to a Polish phone network. It isn't entirely clear exactly where or when Mateusz went off the radar, though German police could not locate the phone either, and they themselves claimed that Mateusz went missing in Poland, therefore was out of their jurisdiction, even though there was no record of him crossing the border. The Kvetskys were understandably outraged by the lack of communication between both law enforcement and were left frustrated by the lack of investigating actually being done. The family believed that neither police force was taking Mateusz's disappearance seriously. As a result of such police incompetence, Mateusz's family took matters into their own hands and began conducting an extensive search for him themselves. They appealed to the media across the country and did everything in their power to locate him and his vehicle, but after months passed with no trace of him, the outcome for the 30-year-old looked bleak. Six months after Mateusz disappeared on September 12th, his mother, who lived in the southeast of Poland, received a knock at her door and was greeted by a neighbour. The neighbour told Mateusz's mother that a strange, putrid smell had been lingering around the Kvetskys' barn for a while, but had most recently gotten worse. The neighbour believed that perhaps a dead animal was lying in the barn somewhere, and that was the cause of the foul stench. 
The neighbour asked if they could inspect the barn, which was split in two, separated by a wall, in order to find the source of the smell, and Mrs Kavetsky agreed to this. This particular part of the barn behind the partition had a room and some attic space above it, which was accessible by a ladder, so the neighbour climbed the ladder and discovered something rather odd on the floor. At first glance, he appeared to have found a pile of clothes. However, upon a closer inspection, the neighbour realised that they had discovered a severely decomposed human body, with the head detached and several of their teeth stuck to the clothing by a substance which appeared to be blood. The neighbour also noticed two ropes tied in a noose hanging from the barn ceiling, as well as a backpack on the floor. Rather strangely, inside the backpack were a number of items which had belonged to missing Mateusz Kavetsky, including his wallet, mobile phone, public transport tickets dated past the day he vanished, a water bottle filled with a few cigarette butts and, rather interestingly, a carton of orange juice. This was very odd, as according to his own family, Mateusz had a strong dislike for orange juice. His mobile phone was analysed and it was discovered that the day he disappeared, a call was made from the mobile phone to his uncle on the 30th of March. However, it lasted less than a second and didn't connect to the receiver. Was this call a mistake, an accidental dial, or was it a desperate call for help? When the body was found, it was far too decomposed to know whether the corpse was Mateus or not. However, medical examiners later confirmed that the body was that of the missing 30-year-old father-to-be. Within a matter of days, investigators ruled Mateus' death as a suicide. They believed that he had been hanging in the barn for some time before his head detached from his body, his skeleton then falling to the floor, but it is important to note here that even if a human head had fallen to the floor, it is very highly unlikely that the teeth would have fallen out. The teeth lying on the clothes which were covered in blood simply could not have fallen out post-mortem. The Kavetsky family were left heartbroken, but also bewildered by the discovery of Mateus' remains. How did he come to be in the barn belonging to his parents? When he last contacted his father and fiancée six months prior, he was heading northwest to Lipia Gora to be with his fiancée, not southeast towards his childhood home. Many could not understand or accept for that matter that Mateus had taken his own life. He was just hours away from becoming a father for the first time. Why would he hang himself before arguably having the most joyous experience of his life? It is of course natural for fathers and mothers to get cold feet at some point prior to becoming a parent. The thought of raising a child can be extremely overwhelming for some, so much so that they simply cannot cope with the prospect. Did this perhaps happen to Matthias? Was he fearful of this new chapter in his life and went back to his childhood home to seek some kind of comfort there? Something else which struck many as odd was the fact that the attic space was clearly visible from the ground floor of the barn, and yet nobody saw Matthias's hanging corpse during the six months he was missing, a busy time for the family, who were constantly in and out of the barn during the summer months. You would think that someone would have seen him. Police believed it to be an open and shut suicide case, however a grim discovery found four days later brought this conclusion into doubt. Whilst rummaging through the barn for clues, the Kavetskys found one of Matthias's shoes, with his detached foot still inside it. How did the police miss such a potentially vital piece of evidence? The autopsy also failed to mention the absence of a foot. It was clear that authorities had not conducted themselves efficiently in this particular investigation. Matthias's car nor the keys have ever been located, either in Germany or in Poland. No further information is known about the public transport tickets dated after Matthias disappeared, other than that they were issued in Poland. Exactly where they were travelling from and what the end destinations were remains a mystery. Why would Matthias have taken public transport when he had a car? Was the traffic so bad that he decided he would be quicker travelling by bus or train, or did he run into some sort of car troubles? 
If so, what happened along the route that caused him to return home and allegedly take his own life? Authorities have thus far refused to reopen the case, despite several desperate appeals from Mateusz's family. According to various Polish news sites, his sister has stated that the family firmly believe that he was somehow murdered and taken to the barn. They are certain that this was not a case of suicide. Mateusz was laid to rest on September 17th, 2018, following a funeral service at the Blessed Virgin Mary Church in Krasnobrud. So much about this case makes very little sense and simply does not add up to a simple suicide case. The village his parents lived in was very small and tight-knit. Nobody noticed anything strange or out of the ordinary leading up to the discovery of Mateusz's body. If he had somehow met with foul play and his death was staged as a suicide, how did the perpetrator firstly manage to locate his family home, secondly manage to hide his body in the barn without arousing suspicion from neighbours, and three, how did they potentially dispose of Mateus's vehicle? Authorities didn't carry out any sort of forensic tests on Mateus's belongings and handed them to his family shortly after his remains were found. If he had been murdered, any potential trace of his killer, such as DNA or fingerprints, won't ever be found unless authorities reopen the case. Maybe then this bizarre case will finally have answers, and Matthias's fiancé and daughter can finally start to rebuild their lives, which were shattered when Matthias's life was tragically cut short.